Hi, my dear friends. Welcome back to KTB Creates. I'm so excited to share with you this video today. I am participating in a collab that we will all add our videos to a playlist. It's called What Would You Do Challenge? And basically what it is, is we um, randomly chose three different aisles from the Dollar Tree and we have to create our DIYs using items from those aisles. So the aisles chosen were hardware, automotive, kitchen, and glassware. So these are the items that I picked up from all three aisles. And let me just jump right into our projects and show you what I created. So for the first DIY, we are gonna take, um, these are two signs that I took um, they are from the Dollar Tree. These happen to be from Easter of last year, but I know they have them all the time uh, for every season. So you could do any kind of square type of a sign um, from the Dollar Tree as well. It doesn't have to have those jagged edges. So all I did was I went in and I removed that cute little bunny on each of the signs. Definitely save them because you know you could use them in a, in a future DIY. So once you did that, you're gonna cut off the little um, strings to the to the sign, and we're gonna get right into creating this amazing DIY. I'm so excited with the way that this turned out. So we are gonna go ahead in and paint them. I always like to use the flip side rather than have to worry about covering all those colors and everything. I'm using my amazing heat gun here to remove those um, Dollar Tree stickers. They pop right off with some heat. And then I'm gonna simply go in and I'm gonna apply my Rust-Oleum chalk paint in linen white all over the sign. Now, I started out with some perfect coverage, but as you know, I love the farmhouse look and that's what I'm going for here. So you don't have to worry about getting a solid um, full coverage because we're going to create different shades and thing like, things like that to make it look a little bit more uh, rustic so that's all I'm doing here so then once that's dry I'm taking two different shades one in silver lining and one in mineral from Waverly and I'm just going to kind of um, dry brush this all in creating just uh, different tones on the on the sign um, just to give it a little bit more uh, interest so that's all you see me doing here and when I usually do this, I kind of mix, I don't use a different uh, brush for each each shade. I just kind of mix it all in and blend it all together with the different shades because I think that gives it a really nice, like authentic look. Um, so that's what you'll see me like mixing the shades and mixing the colors together, not allowing each color to dry. Um, so that's the trick with kind of blending it and uh, making it look cohesive. And then once you are finished with that, you can let that dry. And now we're gonna go ahead in, you're gonna need some paint stir sticks. I bought mine on Amazon. So I'll leave the link in the description box. Um, and we're going to cut, you're gonna need 12 of them and we're gonna cut them at seven inches. Um, and there is a measurement on the back of the stir sticks. So that's all I am using. And this is not only gonna add a little bit of decoration to the sign, but it's also going to allow us to screw in our hanging um, piece and make sure it's really sturdy and permanent. So once you have those all cut down to size, you're just going to sand the, the rough edge that you cut. So you want to make sure they're all sanded and nice and smooth. And then we are going to go in and stain them with some Waverly Antique Wax. Now, I started to do this and then I thought I need. I actually needed to glue them together first so they adhere a little bit better um, prior to staining them because you want to glue the wood to the wood, if that makes sense. So I stopped doing that and now I'm gonna go in with my Gorilla, Gorilla Wood Glue. So you're gonna glue eight pieces together. So you want eight pieces of two sticks glued together. Or no, I'm sorry, you want four. <laughs> See, I'm, I'm messing it up. You want four of these pieces with two sticks together because we're going to make two little um, wall sconces with some ball mason jars. So you want, um, like I said, you want four of them for the top and bottom of each sign. And you can see here, I'm just gluing everything together and then I'm just making sure they adhere really well with my little um, clamps. 
So you want to make sure you let them dry uh, for a few hours uh, before continuing to stain them. And then once you're all done with that part, now you can go in and stain them with, I like to use my antique wax for staining. Um, I know people use a lot of different items, but I just, I love the color. I love the shade of it. Um, I love how easy it is to use. There's no odor to it. So that's why I prefer this antique wax, but there's a lot of other tricks that you can do. You can actually use regular stain too if you prefer that. Now we're gonna go back to our signs and I'm just gonna add a little bit more detail to the signs and I love to do this with a lot of my projects so you'll see this a lot. But I'm taking the antique wax and I'm wiping off the extra on a paper towel and then I'm literally going in and dry brushing it on to the sign. Um, so nice and lightly, it's not, you're not gonna see like a ton of it but it just gives like a really antique rustic type of a look. I do concentrate more like on the sides and in the corners and things like that, but I just love the look that this gives a piece. It just really makes it look, you know, like a true like painting that, you know, you're the artist and um, you know, this is your, your result here. So I did get a heavy, heavy handed and a few spots but I actually like the way it looked so I went ahead and recreated that in a few other spots on the sign okay so you also want it to or at least I want it to stain the other the remaining four pieces of your stir sticks uh, just because I like all of my pieces to look super finished um, just in case I sell them or I give them to a friend I want it to look you know professionally done so I went ahead in and stained those as well even though these are gonna be on the back of your piece and they're really just to add some security to the sign. But just in case you're able to see them, I like to finish everything off. Like I said, I love to finish everything off. So here I'm gonna show you what I usually do for my pieces on the back end of it. I apply, I just glue some um, craft paper right to the back of it. And again, it just makes it look like a really beautiful finished piece. And while you're watching this, I'm gonna talk a little bit about today's challenge. I thought this was so cool and I want, I couldn't wait to be part of it. I joined an amazing group of ladies and we created a playlist. So we're, we'll all be linking our videos to this playlist. So you could go ahead in and watch everyone's video and we're going to all show you what we did with our items from the Dollar Tree from those three aisles, like I said, and what we used to create beautiful Dollar Tree uh, decor. So definitely check out the playlist when you're done watching here because you're gonna get so many more ideas. Okay, so the item that I chose from the automotive hardware aisle are these universal universal tool hooks. <laughs> um, and you're only gonna need two from the pack. So you do have three more available to use for something else. And I am gonna go in and spray paint these in, uh, I used a Rust-Oleum hammered metal um, spray paint. It's called Burnished Amber uh, and it gives a really nice uh, metal type look. So you're going to spray paint those with some spray paint. Now you're all set to apply the wood um, stir sticks to your sign. So on the back you could see I'm just going to apply them like you see here and I am going to use a mixture of my Gorilla Glue, my clear Gorilla Glue and some hot glue and I'm going to apply them right to the back. The Gorilla Glue is unbelievable. It will hold everything. It's it's a great glue to have. And then the hot glue is just so that it'll quickly adhere so I can continue working with it. So you're gonna do that for both signs. Now on the front, you're gonna take your stir sticks that are, you know, the two glued together. You're gonna apply, you know, the glue in the same method and you're going to apply them over the little holes in the sign at the top and make sure that they meet up with the stir stick on the back. And this is just so you have enough room to, to screw in your metal piece here without the nails going through everything. So it adds a decorative touch as well as it's definitely functional. So I just go in here and I measure where I want my hook to uh, screw into the wood and that's I'm just going to pencil in those holes then I am going to take a drill and drill them in but before I do that I kind of playing around with the rope because we're going to hang it with some twine 
So I'm deciding how much rope I need to hang the mason jar with it. So that's all I'm going to do here. And I am using a thicker twine. I'm not using the Dollar Tree twine because I do, you know, you want it to be um, stable. Uh, so this is a little bit of a thicker twine. Okay, so a little trick when you're drilling some nails. You could apply a blue painter's tape to your drill bit so that you don't drill like completely through. You're only drilling the whole, the length of the nail or screw that you're using. So that's a little trick to do with your, with your drill when you're working on that. And then you're all set to drill your, the holes for your screws in the tops of both of the signs. And can I tell you, this is one of my favorite little tools that I have in my arsenal and it's a little ladybug table like vacuum. It's the best and it's def it's linked in my Amazon store if you're interested. So now it's time to take your, your hook and you are going to um, screw that right into the holes you pre-drilled. So that's what I am doing here. And it gives a really nice sturdy um, hold here. I also didn't show you this part, so I'm gonna show you it now. I did this on the other side. I did um, apply some sawtooth hangers to the back and I pre-drilled a little hole and then just screwed them in with the little uh, screwdriver. And then another little trick here is taking some of that spray paint that I spray painted these with and I'm just going to keep applying it to uh, the screw heads uh, just because it uh, that way you don't have to worry about you know spray over spray or anything. I did go ahead and go in and touch up different spots on it as well that um, chipped off or scratched off uh, as well. So no, another little tip something easily that you could do. <laughs> And now it's time to work on your jars and securing them with your twine. So here again, I'm just kind of measuring um, to, to see how far down I want the jar to hang. And then I'm gonna take these little strands and I'm gonna tie them in a knot. And then we're gonna hot glue that right to the jar on both sides. And you wanna make sure they're hanging evenly. And you can also cut off the end. I wasn't sure what I wanted to do with that. Uh, but I did decide in the end, I just cut off those little pieces. And then to secure it even further, because these are glass and you do want to make sure that everything is secure, I am just going to wrap that twine around the top rim of the jar just to make sure, like I said, everything is super secure and nothing is going anywhere. So I'm just going to again take some hot glue and I am going to wrap that nice and tightly around the top rim of the jar and then to finish everything off um, I just take a little bit of a lighter and I just burn off some of those fuzzies the thicker twine for some reason has a lot of extra fuzz on it so and this does the trick really quickly if you're nervous about it just have some water nearby just in case but I've never had any issues doing this and then that's it for um, the finished result i am hanging it uh, alongside my clock in my living room and i added some some of that floral moss inside the mason jars and then i just decided to go with some picks of uh, lavender so that's what i am adding here and i absolutely love the rustic farmhouse look that these pieces give and you would never know it was all you all created using uh, mostly Dollar Tree items and a few inexpensive uh, other pieces. So definitely let me know what you think. I love to hear from my subscribers uh, down below in the comment section of all three of these videos. I need to know which one is your favorite. If you are new here, welcome to my channel. If you love DIYs and all kinds of um, thrift flips and things like that, then you are going to want to stick around. So I encourage you to go ahead and hit that subscribe button and please like, comment and share um, my videos. Definitely also visit me over on my social media. I will leave that information right here for you uh, because I do like to share a little bit more behind the scenes and some more on um, personal uh, family and just fun uh information over there as well. So for my next DIY, I'm going to use these two jars that I found in the glassware aisle. You guys, Dollar Tree has definitely been stepping up their game as far as their glassware goes. There's so many different 
cool shapes and designs, but I absolutely loved these because of that detail on them. So all I'm doing here is I'm gonna really lightly um, dry brush on my linen white uh, chalk paint just to give it some added detail and allow uh, that detail to kind of pop. And then I took one of these little um, shadow box signs that the Dollar Tree always has. I just had this in my stash and I just went in and uh, just reapplied some of the white chalk paint around the edges and everything because we're going to apply some scrapbook paper to the middle. So you just want to make sure that everything has a nice finished uh, look to it. I also went in and painted the back and then I removed um, the little sawtooth hanger. We're going to use this piece as kind of like a little stand to have differing levels for your jars. And then all I'm doing here is I'm going to take my scrapbook paper that I did purchase at Hobby Lobby and I am just going to cut it to size and you know it's not perfect it's not a perfect method you're going to have to keep trimming it to um, make it fit into the shadow box but this is the easiest method that I found that works for me. And then when you're done measuring all of that, I'm just going to use my glue stick and I'm just going to glue that right to the bottom of this. And then just to dress it up a little, I wasn't going to do this, but I had these stickers in my stash. Um, they're just little round like puffy dots and um, I'm going to just trim them around the edge of this just to add some more detail to the piece. So. I was having a little bit of trouble with sticking these and trying to keep it even. So I decided I went ahead in with a, a line of painter's tape. So I applied that to where I wanted the sticker to, um, to start at and that made sure that everything was aligned, you know, in a, in a nice clean line, straight line. <laughs> and then of course I went in and applied some of the chalk paint to cover up these little stickers and I did need to do um, two thick coats of this. And you want to make sure that you're wiping the paint on in all different directions so you're covering all angles of the stickers. But I just love the additional touch that this adds to a piece and you can use them for almost anything um, to embellish a sign or a picture frame or this as well. And then I did go ahead in and dry brush a little bit more on that scrapbook paper as well. Now I love this little trick. I found these at the Dollar Tree as well. And they're these little um, toys, uh, they're dominoes, but the back of them, they're actually wood. Uh, so I'm gonna use them as little tags uh, for my jars. So I did go ahead in and paint the domino side with my chalk paint just to cover that up really well. And then the other wood side, I want it to go in and stain that with my, um, my antique wax. And then because I was gonna be adding some wording to these tags, I did decide to go in and just lightly dry brush um, some of that chalk paint on the stained side, um, just so the lettering uh, shows up a little bit better. And then of course, because it's never enough for me, I decided to add a little bit of the antique wax and just dry brush that onto the little tray that we're gonna use as a stand just to bring out that little detail with the stickers. And I absolutely love the way uh, this part turned out. So I just went ahead and did that to all the edges and the corners and everything. And I just love this antique wax. I love the look that it gives a piece. So now we're going to do our wording and I know I use my Cricut or my Cameo a lot, <laughs> but you know, you can also hand letter. And if I could do this, I'm telling you anybody can. So uh, what I did was I wrote it down on a piece of paper because that helps me, I don't know, better, I'm, I'm better, I'm able to write it neater um, on the piece that I want to write it on, if that makes any sense. So that's all I did here. And I went in and I'm going to use my Arteza acrylic uh, marker, but I started with the white and I didn't like the way that looks. So I literally just wiped that right off. And then I went back in with my brown um, Arteza, Arteza acrylic marker. 
and I just love the way this looks. You could also use the stickers from Dollar Tree if you wanted to, or like I said, you could use a vinyl cutting machine to cut, cut out um, a sticker, but I just wanted to show you how easy it is to actually do your own lettering. And then you could have um, pre-drilled a hole through this, but I wasn't sure Piece, it's a pretty the, thin the, the tag. So I decided that I would just apply um, some twine to the rim of the jar, and then I just hot glued the tag right to the twine. And I think that worked well enough. I think it'll stay. I just kind of angled it and um, just hot glued it right, right to that twine. And then just to dress it up a little bit more, I went in and made a little twine bow, and I just hot glued that right to the top of the tag as well. And now it's time to go ahead in and finish off this little stand that I created for these. And I decided to go ahead and do a layer of Mod Podge in here just because these obviously are going to be located in the bathroom. And just with the steam of the shower and things like that, I didn't want the stickers to fall off or the scrapbook paper to I don't to get ruined uh, with the the moisture you know that is often in our in our bathrooms. So that's why I'm doing this step here. And then you also want to be sure to add a thin layer of Mod Podge to the actual jars as well, because as you know, with chalk paint or any kind of paint on glass, it can easily like chip off or scrape off and. and you know stuff like that so that's why I went ahead and did that now I wanted to show you I actually had one of these that I'm going to use for this and I had it spray painted white but when I was spray painting um, the hooks for the first DIY I splattered some on it and I loved the way it looked so I just kind of went with it um, and I splattered more of that burnished amber onto um, the white and we're just gonna use this as our little stand. I just went in and measured and made sure that it was even, and I outline it where um, I'm gonna apply, um, because we're gonna apply some Gorilla Glue and hot glue on the top of this to glue to your little um, sign, and that allows you to, to actually place it in the, the right spot uh, when, you're, when you're ready to adhere it to your sign. And that's it. This was a pretty easy project. I know there's a lot of steps to it, but it was fun and easy. And I think it looks adorable. This is how it turned out. And it's just a cute little feature to add to your decor in your bathroom. So definitely let me know what you think. And then for our final and third DIY, I am gonna take these items that I purchased from the kitchen aisle in the Dollar Tree. So it's these wooden utensils and then the pizza pan. And then I found these rub-on transfers. These must be new because I haven't seen them before, but I thought it was totally fitting and it's like a gold rub-on transfer. So I'm so excited to use this. So obviously we're gonna go in and start with our painting. I, of course, when anything is wood, I love to use my antique wax just to bring out the grain in it and just make it look like really beautifully finished. So that's all I did here was I went in and I applied that and then wiped it off with a paper towel. Just make sure you get all of the edges and of course I do the front and back because you will be able to uh, see everything. And of course, for the pizza sign or the pizza pan, um, I decided to finish some chalk paint that I had. So this is a uh, Waverly chalk paint and plaster. So I'm just going to go ahead and apply two even coats of that to the pizza pan. And then I also went ahead in with my mineral um, chalk paint as well as some antique wax with a chip brush. And I just went in and dry brushed uh, both of those shades in on the sign a little bit just to bring out the edging of the sign and just add a little bit more uh, detail and give it a little bit of a rustic uh, look as well. And then you're all set to apply your rub-on transfers. Now the sheet comes in a cute little like rectangular where you could just apply that as is but I want it to space things out a little bit more so I went ahead in and I cut all the 
transfers that I wanted to use. I didn't use everything on the sheet and um, kind of arranged them on the sign the way I wanted it to look. And then I went in and I, you know, removed the backing and stuck everything on uh, really well. Now, some of them, it, it's like hard to, uh, you know, rub on. You don't get like all of the pieces. So I would just tell you just to go really slowly. Um, I rub them on with like a little spatula um, tool and just go slowly when you're lifting it up and keep pressing uh, if you see something isn't transferring uh, good enough. But this is an absolutely gorgeous rub-on transfer. I was so excited to find this and it was perfect for the, the vision and the project that I was looking to do. And then the final step to this is just to go ahead in and hot glue your utensils to, I decided to do the top and the bottom. You could do either side if that's how you wanted to do it, but I think this is absolutely adorable and it adds such a cute little touch to your kitchen decor. And this is what the final piece looks like. As I said, let me know which is your favorite. Definitely when you're done here, I'll link the playlist in uh, my description box. You're going to go want to check out all of my friends' videos as well. And I hope you enjoyed. Have a wonderful week. If you haven't already, please go ahead and click that subscribe button and leave me a comment. It helps my channel grow and I appreciate it so very much. Thank you all. Have a wonderful week and I will see you all soon.